Good morning. Welcome you on this 23rd Sunday of Pentecost. Extend a warm welcome to anyone who may be worshiping with us for the first time, either here in the sanctuary or online. We invite those seated on the inside aisles to sign the friendship pads and to pass them along. As always, we encourage you to greet another, one another warmly. The cupola this morning is lit in loving memory, or actually this week will be lit in loving memory of Helen Bigham by her family. And also the altar flowers are given in memory of departed members of the faith circle. And I'm going to call upon our minister of discipleship. Good morning. Good morning. As you can tell by my retreat, this is not my daily attire. But it does match my robe nicely, so that works. So after the service, those who decorated their trunks, Hugh, and not shake his hand and go out and make sure that your trunk is all set. If you are not staying for trunk or treat, we invite you to Fellowship Hall, um, and then you can leave when the time suits you. If you'd like to come check out trunk or treat, even though your trunk is not decorated, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, if you save the dates on November 19th, we actually have two events. Faith and Fellowship is hosting. They're very busy that day. Right after coffee hour, we will be working with an organization called Gina's Giving Back to provide food for Thanksgiving meals for people in need. So we will have a sign-up link, link, like muffins, cookies, things like that. Or if you would like to join us on that day to make mashed potatoes and stuffing. And then that afternoon, we will have a charcuterie board making workshop. So we hope you will join us for that. If you have an announcement, I invite you to come sit in the first pew. But I believe that Jack Hutchins has an announcement for outreach. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a member of the outreach committee in the church, our, our outreach committee, and this month we're doing um, treats for troops. This, this is a, a program where the people in the military overseas get candy and such that's left over from Halloween or whatever, um, and we have a participant that's uh, Rory Stinson, who's a member of this church, who will be receiving the candy. She is in uh, South Korea right now. And I know from previous years, she was, they all the troops enjoyed the candy. Um, there's a basket in, in a fellowship hall that's labeled treats for troops. And if you have leftover candy left over from Halloween, um, we appreciate putting that in the basket for, and then it'll be sent out and for the next two weeks until the 12th. That's when we stop collecting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. I believe Heidi has a fair announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we have, uh, there's a lot of announcements, but I'm only going to make two or three really short ones. But I'm going to leave a couple copies of an email that just went out. I'll make it, leave a couple hard copies out in Fellowship Hall in case anyone wants them. But um, this was just sent out yesterday, I think. And it, it's several pages long. So I'm just going to highlight a couple of Frosty Fair needs. One is that the cafe, Frosty's Cafe, needs one more volunteer for Friday night. So if you can see either Don Putney or Leslie Musiak, um, that would be great. And then the other thing is that uh, wreaths are now on s for sale and orderable via a link that was in the email. Um, if you don't do anything online, there will be hard copy order forms, of course, in Nadine's office. And the last thing I just want to mention is, uh, what was the last thing? Oh, we have a date for uh, Brasante has graciously agreed to do a fundraiser with us again. I think this is maybe our 
third or fourth year, and 10% of the proceeds of all her sales that day go to Frosty's Fair, come to the church. And so that date is Saturday, December 9th. And so if you can make a mental note of that, write it down, put it on your calendars, uh, that would be great, and plan on doing some further Christmas shopping that day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heidi. And I believe Leslie has an announcement as well. Good morning, fellow procrastinators. If you're waiting for the last minute to complete your survey for the five-year strategic plan, congratulations. We're here. If you could please do it by Tuesday, end of day Tuesday, that would be great. The more uh, feedback we get, the better it's going to use this plan going forward for a lot of decisions in the next five years. So teens, seniors, everyone in between, if you're new, if you were born into the church, we really would like your opinion on how stuff is going. It just takes 10 or 15 minutes to complete, requires some thought, but there's no, you know, rev-worthy theological questions or you don't have to spill your guts about your deepest feelings or anything, so it's relatively painless. So we ask that everybody take a little time that hasn't done it, and there's a link to do it online in the Hilltop News, or you can pick up a hard copy and get it in. And if you have any questions, I'll be making cotton candy for a trunk or treat, and you can come see me. Thanks. Thank you all for your announcements. I will also add to Heidi's announcement, the printed order forms for the wreaths are available on the welcome table. There's also a QR code so that you can do it online. Reminder that our youth groups are meeting every Friday night from 7 to 8.30. We met last Friday evening for a game night. Lots of wonderful energy. We invite all of our middle and high school students to come to the two groups. Also, as some of you know, I have a tour coming up that was going to take me to Egypt and Jordan for a uh, follow the route of the exodus. You can rest assured the tour was canceled on Monday. <laughs> However, within 24 hours, thanks to uh, Samantha Sutherland, I am now going to Machu Picchu this week. So I, um, I know, I know. <laughs> Jealousy is one of the seven deadly sins, you know. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? If not, then let us draw near to God's throne of grace that we might rejoice in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting. join me in the call to worship. God calls us into this community of healing and hope. Where we are all disciples of the living Christ. God calls us into this community of sacrifice and service. Where the cries of the lost and the lonely will be heard. 
God calls us into this wonderfully blessed family of faith. Where we strive to love one another. Join me in the prayer of invocation. God, God whose grace inspired Martin Luther to proclaim a new and radical understanding of the Christian faith. On this Reformation Sunday, we celebrate the good news that we are saved not by our good deeds, but by our faith in your reconciling love that was at work in the life, death, and resurrection of your only begotten Son. As we gather, we also affirm to believe in the priesthood of all believers. So help us, Holy One, to discover our gifts for ministry here in this community of faith and the wider world. This we ask as we say together the prayer of Savior God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. Please be seated. In the book of Hebrews, it says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those who have come before us, 
we come this day to continue the journey of faith and to continue their work. So let us come now to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings.
join me in the prayer of dedication. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for the legacy of Martin Luther and all the faithful saints who are with us even now. As we bring you this offering, we ask you to help us to faithfully share the good news here in this community of faith and in the wider world. This we ask as disciples of the living Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I invite the boys and girls to please join me. Good to see you, and I see a lot of you are dressed up for, I think there's a special day coming up. <laughs> Is it Tuesday or Monday? Tuesday. It's, it's Christmas. Christmas. No, <laughs> it's not Christmas. What, what day is Tuesday? I will say it all together. One, two, three. Halloween. That's right. Halloween. And there's been mentioned this morning of somebody by the name of Martin Luther. And did you know that Halloween is also known as Reformation Sunday? And this is a picture of Martin Luther. He lived over 500 years ago. And he read his Bible. He was a man of great faith. And on October 31st, which we celebrate today as Halloween, he went to a church in Wittenberg, Germany. And this is a picture of the church. And he posted a, a document on that door called his 95 Theses. These are things he wanted to talk about when it comes to faith. And the most important thing that Martin Luther said is that we don't earn God's love. That's different from the way we live our lives. So for example, I have here all these diplomas, okay, all the way from high school through seminary. And do you think I just went to high school and to college and seminary and said, hey, can you give me one of those diplomas? No, I had to study, didn't I? I had to work for them. Absolutely. And let's see. I used to play a lot of uh, tennis. And if I was in a tennis tournament, do you think I could just show up and say, hey, could I have one of those trophies? No, you have to practice, don't you? And you have to earn it. And this is my laptop. And do you think I could just go into a store and say, could you just give me one of those laptops for free? No, I had to save my money and I had to save it until I had enough so I could buy it. And how many of you get an allowance? Any of you get allowance? Okay, a number of you, okay? And usually, when you get an allowance, you have to do a chore or something to earn that allowance. And that's the way it works with a lot of things in life. But Martin Luther said that we don't earn God's love. God's love is a gift to us. And that's what we celebrate, one of the things that we celebrate on Reformation Sunday is the fact that we don't earn God's love. God's love to us is a gift. And it's a gift that we receive in Jesus, his life, and when he was on the cross, and when he was raised from the grave to everlasting life. So we celebrate because God's love is a gift to us. And I believe that Abby is doing the prayer this morning. 
come on. Up. Okay. Why don't you come right over here? Okay, get in a little closer so we can, everybody at home can see you too. Dear God, we thank you for Martin Luther who showed us that your love for us in Jesus is a gift. It isn't something that we earn. So help us show how so help us show you have s much we appreciate the gift of your love by loving each other. Yes, Amen. Thank you very much. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Good people, let us enter the, into this time of stillness that we might be one with our God. Disciples of the risen Christ, are there prayers that you would like to lift up this morning? Yes, Sharon. Hi. Um, Kathy's uh, brother, Shane, has had a very bad uh, bike accident in Florida. He's on the critical list. Oh, dear. And this is Kathy's? Kathy Whitmore. No, no, but... Uh, Kathy Brother. brother, okay, brother so Shane. yeah, so we lift up Kathy Whitmore's uh, brother Shane, who was in an accident and is in rather serious condition. We pray that God's spirit of healing will be upon him. Lord, in your goodness. Second, please. 
Yes, we lift up uh, all those who have been so deeply traumatized by the senseless tragedy in, in Lewiston, and we pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones. Lord, in your goodness, also lift up in prayer. Diana Jenkins, she did have her knee surgery this past week, and it went well. We ask for continued healing. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. Also, last week this did not get mentioned, but Nancy Ferretti thanks the kind women of our church for their continued support, and we give thanks for a community of faith where we care about one another and walk with one another through all of life's joys and challenges. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. Also, I want to thank all of those who worked on the front steps and completed that project, a wonderful addition uh, to God's house. And we thank them for all of their hard work, particularly in the heat of the summer. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. We also continue to lift up all of the people of the Middle East as that tragedy, that violence continues uh, to unfold there. We pray for peace with all of our hearts. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for calling us once again into your presence, where we find the peace that passes all understanding, where we find the joy that the world out there cannot give us, where we find the love that makes life worth living. Holy One, uh, you have heard the prayers that we have uh, shared, both those that we have uttered and those that are stirring in our hearts. And for that, we give you thanks. As we worship you, praise you here, we also know that when uh, the last hymn is sung, we will go forth to continue life's journey. And we pray that we may faithfully serve you wherever that journey may take us. And we pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter. As you can tell, I forgot the large print bulletin, I mean the large print Bible. Get those glasses out. I know it. I can't find which pocket I put my glasses in. You like mine? I got them. Thank you. We read these words. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the promised land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negev and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. And the Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I've let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor but no one knows the place of his burial 
to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor unabated. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. None like him for all of the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all of his servants and to all of his land. And for all of the mighty deeds and the great power that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our Redeemer. Amen. Actions always have consequences. For example, if you put your hand on a hot stove, what's going to happen? That's right. You're going to end up with a nasty burn on your hand. That's what's going to happen. Here's another one. If you get too close to the edge of a cliff, what's going to happen? Once again, it's simple. You're either going to find yourself in an ambulance on the way to the nearest hospital, or you're going to end up lying in a casket in a funeral home somewhere. Actions always have consequences. A newlywed husband uh, saw that when he and his wife went to the Grand Canyon for their honeymoon. While they were there, they went on one of those tours where you ride a donkey that takes you to the bottom of the canyon. Shortly after the tour began, the wife's donkey stumbled and she almost fell off. The wife just shook her head and calmly said, that's once. A little while later, the mule stumbled again. Once again, the wife calmly shook her head and said, that's twice. When it happened a third time, she got down out of the saddle and shot the mule dead. <laughs> the husband was horrified. I can't believe you just did that, he shouted. How could you do that to a poor, defenseless animal? At that point, the wife just looked at her husband and calmly said, that's once. <laughs> Actions always have consequences. You can see that by looking at Moses and what happened to him up there on Mount Nebo. It must have been a bitter sweet moment for him. That's because when Moses got to the top of Mount Nebo, he could see the promised land, but he also knew that he wasn't going to be the one to lead the Israelites into the promised land. The reason why Moses didn't get that moment of glory is because of something that he did many years earlier at a place called Mirabah. That story is also in the book of Deuteronomy. And this is what we know. At Mirabah, the people went to Moses and they complained because they were dying of thirst. So God told Moses to gather the people together in front of this really big rock. God then told Moses to strike the rock with his staff. And when Moses did that, water came gushing out of the rock. But there was a problem. Moses didn't give God the credit for the miracle. Moses took the credit for the miracle. And that's why he didn't get to lead the Israelites into the promised land. Yes, actions always have consequences. But this morning, instead of dwelling on Moses and what happened to him, 
we're going to focus on Joshua and what happened to him. That's because Joshua's story shows you that consequences don't have to be bad. Consequences can be good. Consequences can fill your heart with joy. Consequences can lead you to a life that is absolutely abundant. So let's take a closer look at Joshua, if this sounds good to you, and if this is what you want for you and your loved ones, if you want consequences that are good. Look at Joshua. This is what we know. Joshua was the one who got to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land, and do you know why? It was because of something that Joshua did many years earlier. It happened when the Israelites got to the edge of the Promised Land. And Moses decided to send a handful of spies into the Promised Land to scout it out. Eventually, those spies came back with all kinds of mouth-watering dates and figs and huge clusters of grapes. Now think about it, all of that must have really looked appetizing to a bunch of people who had already been wandering around a dusty, desolate wilderness for at least 30 years. So yes, the spies told the people that the promised land was indeed flowing with milk and honey. But the spies also said that the land was full of giants and that there was no way the people were going to be able to defeat them and take possession of the promised land. So you know what they did? They turned around and they went back into that dusty, desolate wilderness for another 10 or so years. There was one spy, though, who was adamant that day that the time had come for the people to go in and take possession of the promised land. That spy said, let us go up at once and occupy it, for the Lord is with us. And yes, you probably guessed it. That spy's name was Joshua. Joshua was faithful to God, and he was the one who led the Israelites into the promised land. Actions always have consequences, but Joshua shows you that the actions don't have to be bad and leave you feeling sad. When you do what God wants you to do, when you live your life the way God wants you to live your life, it will bring you consequences that are good, consequences that will fill your heart with gladness, consequences that will eventually lead you to the life that is truly abundant. That was true for Joshua. It's true for you. And it was true for a young man by the name of Aaron Stark. I first became aware of Aaron Stark's story this past week at a Wednesday morning Bible study. This is a picture of Aaron Stark. It was taken during a TED Talk that he gave. Now, if you're not familiar with TED Talks, the organization's website says that it's all about ideas worth sharing. Do you know what the title of Aaron Stark's TED Talks was? I was almost a school shooter. His story is incredible. It's full of horror, but it's also full of hope. You see, Aaron Stark was born into a very dysfunctional and violent family. He was severely abused physically, emotionally, and sexually. He was told over and over and over again that he was worthless. Eventually, it got to the point where Aaron decided that he was going to get a gun and shoot as many people as he could before killing himself. The interesting thing is, in his TED Talk, he said that it wasn't because of any animosity that he had toward his classmates. He said it was because he wanted his parents to feel shame for creating such a worthless human being. 
Isn't that sad? Talk about actions having bad consequences. Fortunately, Aaron Stark didn't follow through with his plan. And the reason why he didn't was because of a classmate named Mike Stacy. Mike Stacy came from a very loving home. And he didn't judge Aaron. Instead, he embraced him as a friend. They bonded over comic books. One night, when Aaron was living on the streets and surviving on free food samples, he went to Mike Stacy's house and knocked on the door. Aaron said that he did that because he was there to say goodbye to his friend. As soon as Mike Stacy opened the door, he could tell that Aaron was in all kinds of emotional pain. So he invited Aaron into the house. And in his TED talk, this is what Aaron said. He didn't know what I was planning, but he saw the pain that I was in, and he knew the hell that I had been living in. And he brought me in and treated me like I was a person. And at the time, I was absolutely inhuman. I was nothing but destruction and death. And he treated me like I was just a kid again. And he brought me in, and we had food, gave me a shower. And he would always tell me that I was a good kid living in a crap world. And I stayed with him during this time. Being treated like a person when you don't feel like a human will literally change your world. And it was the most powerful thing that ever happened to me. And he's still my best friend today. He's an uncle to my kids. So today, I'm a happy family man, father of four. Good people, actions always have consequences. And those consequences don't have to be bad and leave you feeling sad. When you love the Lord with all of your heart and soul and mind and strength, you're going to do what God wants you to do. You're going to live your life the way God wants you to live your life. And it will lead you to consequences that are good, consequences that will make your heart glad, consequences that will make it possible for you to experience the life that is truly abundant. Amen.
People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be upon you all. Amen.